Good morning, and uh, welcome to episode number four of the massing season. Now, I I am still in shorts. Uh, I don't know why, but it seems to be quite warm outside and it's almost November. But I'm going with it, I'm going with it. I've got a lot of tasks to do this morning. First is to fill up the fridge. Um, hashtag Team Aldi. If any of you do shop in Aldi, it's uh, considerably cheaper, but you can get everything. Berries aren't very good because they don't last very long, but most of it's, it's, it's solid. You know, it's mostly solid. And you also get like Greek yogurt and stuff, proper Greek yogurt with proper protein content. So that's always nice. That's my first task. Second one is to train today. Now I do know it's a deload week, which is kind of boring when it comes to training, but I'm going to do like an overview, over talky kind of vloggy part of the training. I'm gonna discuss what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, so that you can maybe try and apply it if you're deloading with me on this mass season, or if you're certainly considering one after I discussed it in the previous episode. I'm gonna finish this coffee and then, yeah, it's uh, hashtag Team Aldi shopping. I don't think I've quite mastered the uh, the ability to get in and out of this car without um with a big old camera. Either way, it is ash hashtag Team Aldi time, so we're gonna see what we can pick up there, and then I might swing by Tesco's, but we'll see. Either way, it is a lovely day out here, and hopefully I can enjoy at least some of it. Aldi can be a bit challenging sometimes. I think I've gone and forgotten my uh, my pound for the trolley. Yeah, you got to remember so much when you come to Aldi. You've got to remember your uh, your bags and a pound. So I'm gonna have to somehow work this out. Maybe buy some. Maybe buy some more mints. <laughs> right, Aldi shopping time. Wish me luck. Amazing what you can get from Aldi for uh, 85 quid. I mean, that's three full bags and you know all the usual toiletries and, and whatnot. So I do like shopping there. It's just it's it can be a bit mad trying to get a car parking space, and it's also not got everything that you need, or the stuff tastes a bit funky. Like I think their Nutella is called Nacola or something like that. But they do have sorin loaves somewhere in this milieu of stuff. I have sorin loaves, which are very, very nice, and I do like to eat them. Uh, high in fibre, lots of carbohydrates if you're on a mass bulking or season mass building thing. Right, I'm going to stick all this stuff away. Then I'm going to get to uh, get some work done, finally, uh, and also get to the gym. That's what I need to get to be done. Okay. Laura said not to ramble, so I'm not going to ramble, I promise. Okay. Toodles! Some of you may or may not know how much I actually love a big salad. Um, so. I I don't like having to buy all the bits and then chop it all up and blah 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 blah. Yes, I'm yes, I'm being lazy, but you know, that's just the that's just the way it is. Okay, I just like it, make it easier. But anyway, I like to buy these sort of crunchy salad, crunchy salad things. Um, they're quite expensive from Tesco's, but they're very good. They're pro that's probably my favourite one. Um, however, the Aldi one's cheap and it's also very nice. So what I do is I have here all of the salad in there. I get a skinless and boneless uh, salmon thing from Tesco's. Skinless and boneless specifically because when it's not, you just get bits of vertebrae of salmon, which isn't very nice. I add a very simple um, olive oil dressing, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, and then I'll probably consume one of, half of one of these loaves. Maybe the whole one, probably just half, because massing isn't about getting f fat, it's about eating enough to support training and muscle building. So that's, yeah, that's, that's what I love. I love these salads, absolutely adore them. So well worth getting. I am a lazy chef and hopefully I can show you some other things with this massing season when we get to the nutritional vlog that I'll be doing next week or the week after. Okay, yeah, enjoy this and definitely gonna get some work done. Well, I thought I'd do something a little bit different in terms of recording these videos and going over them for uh, basically just this actually. Now, the workout that I have this week is obviously a deload week. So that deload week is 
a lot easier than normal. It means that I'm going to be doing little things like more foam rolling, a little bit more stretching, a lot less sets and whatnot, certainly with when it comes to uh, the actual workout itself. I don't usually do much foam rolling. I don't have much time to train sometimes because I've got lots of one-to-one -one clients. As you can see, I make nice funny faces. But what I try and do is do a little bit more foam rolling, certainly in the deloads phases, um, and then introduce some sort of stretching. So I did my calves, I did my quads, I did my back. I did a little bit of hamstrings, adductors, that kind of thing. And then I go into a little bit of stretching movements and things, trying to open up my hips. I typically have quite tight hips anyway, so I did do a bird stretch, a pigeon stretch even, and then I did this piriformis stretch. Um, then I move into a little bit of ankle mobility typically because I injured my left ankle quite some time ago um, where it kind of a lot more stiff than my right side. So I perform this exercise. There's also another one that I do during my training, which is also very, very helpful. Um, and again, it, the, the shoes help the ov overall ankle flexion anyway for depth. But this, again, just part of the warm-up process. I also have very tight quads. Um, so what I'm doing here is I hold it for about five seconds. I don't tend to want to hold it any longer just because I, I still want to remain strong with it in session. This is not necessarily about m improving flexibility overall. If I was, I'd probably hold it for much, much longer. But I'm just squeezing my glutes, driving the hips forward slightly and trying to feel the weight through my quadricep and up through my hip. I then like to finish with something a bit more specific and I have this sort of plate squat where I hold the position, um, keeping the back nice and flat, feel the weight through the floor, feel that tripod foot where the front two parts of my foot and then the heel, I can feel it on the floor, I'm driving my knees out and it works as a nice stretch overall. Now, this uh, first exercise was our barbell back squats. These barbell back squats, I'm uh, trying to progress back into a low bar squat. Um, typically, I've done a high bar squat. Um, the low bar, a little bit more uh, a little bit better for um, overall strength aspect of things. Um, so I'm going to move that into the programming for this coming mass season starting on Monday. A couple of little things. I wasn't bracing quite as hard as I want to. Um, I have a little bit of a tuck at the bottom, um, but it felt strong and it felt relatively fast. It's only 100 kilograms, but two sets of eight repetitions at 100, it was pretty, pretty easy. Um, we then moved on to some uh, semi-stiff legged -like deadlifts. This again was 100 kilograms. I've worked up to 150 overall in the last phase of programming, so this was pretty easy. I also didn't use any straps or anything, and my grip was suffering just a little bit towards the end, but overall it felt good. Then we got sort of upper body push and pull, so an inclined dumbbell press. Um, these were 27 and a half, so really easy for me generally. Normally I'm pressing anywhere between 45s and 50s for sets of 10, and this was, this was nice and easy. So it was just a case of find a good position, squeeze the muscle a little bit. It felt nice. Um, and it's kind of just, that's what it was really. It just was a nice exercise, felt comfortable, and I was pretty happy with it, to be honest. Um, from there, it was a case of a seated cable row. Um, I like, really like this exercise. I like a nice stretch. I kind of vary the um, bars that I use. So I'll use a straight bar, like a lat pull down bar. Um, I'll go wider, a bit narrower, and then I use this neutral grip bar. But again, it was just all about sort of the stretch, all about squeezing the shoulder blades together as hard as I could, and then sort of completing again two to ten, two sets of sort of 10 to 12 repetitions on both the incline press and the dumbbell press. Well, I now have dinner on ready for Laura. She does love a fish cake, so we're having some cheddar fish cakes from Aldi, which are pretty good. They're like 200 calories, 20 odd grams of protein. We have some vegetables and kale and all that kind of thing. I tend to use something called Cavallo Nero, which is like a black kale. Cook it a bit more, tastes much better than curly kale. On another note, tomorrow I have to have a man come round to check this out. This here apparently might have asbestos in it. Um, so yeah, finding out asbestos in your ceiling thing is about as much fun as actually owning a house sometimes. Got to do things like this. So tomorrow they're going to check that out and go over it and talk about it and whatever. But either way, training was quite good today, you know, a little bit of the foam rolling and things, so I did enjoy that. And just, just you just feel it out, that's what a deload is. You know, I really want to go to the gym tomorrow and sort of smash some upper body and some biceps and whatnot, but taking my time, take the deload, train again on Friday, do some more squats and deadlifts and things and just kind of just feel it out, feel a bit better. But yeah, that that's going to really annoy me. Anyway, this is uh, episode four of 
the massing season. I'm going to join my dinner, and I'll see you on Tuesday at 5.30 for the next episode. Peace!